Okay, let's say that we have these two equations, x1 minus 2x sub 2 equals 1, 2x sub 1 minus x sub 2 equals 8, and we want to solve these with matrix methods. Now, now realize you could write these, at the, these are the same thing as x and y. Some students just have difficulties when you do those subscripts. There's no different difference there, okay? So if I first write these in a matrix, notice it's understood there's a 1 there, there's a negative 2, and then a 1, and then the second equation, a 2, remember it's understood there's a negative 1 there, and then there's an 8. The final goal is to get this matrix to look like that. And when it looks like that, those are my answers. So I do this with row operations. So the order is, is the very first step is to turn that into a 1. Ta-da! Are you impressed? It's already a 1. <laughs> All right, if it wasn't a 1, you would divide by whatever value is there. I know, you're not impressed. Okay. Second step then would be to turn this 2 into a 0. And you do these row operations based on any time you want to turn something into a 0, you use another row. Well, there's only one other row. What if I took negative 2 times row 1 and I added it to row 2? First of all, you have to think about, well, why would I even do that? Well, if I take negative 2 times 1 and add it to 2, I get 0. When you do a row operation, and I actually should pick this up and move it, you do not, well, I tried, you, you are not changing the row that you are using. You're changing, you know, eventually I'm going to be able to grab this and, and get it to move. I may not have got that negative sign. Hopefully I got it. Okay. What you're doing is you're using this first row, so I'm not changing it. I'm just simply using that to change this next row. So this next row says take negative 2 times row 1. So negative 2, so I'm, I'm going to look at this one right here first. Negative 2 times the value in row 1, which looks to be 1, and I add the value in row 2, and I think I get my 0. That's what I wanted. I have to do the rest of these because if you remember, these are equations. Whatever you do to one term, you have to do to every all the rest of the terms. So notice the next term, I'm sorry there's going to be two negative two, so I hope that didn't mess you up. I'm going to take negative two times the value that is in row one, which is negative two, and I am going to add it, I'm going to add it to row two. So negative 2 and negative 2 is a positive 4 plus negative 1 or 4 minus 1. I get a 3. All right, let's keep going. I'm going to take negative 2 times what is in row 1, and then I'm going to add it to what is in row 2. So it looks like that would be 6 because negative 2 plus 8 or 8 minus 2, and I get 6. Does that look like that? No. So i got to keep going. All right, the, the ones are easy. The, the zeros are this all this business here. If you want something to turn into a one, and that's actually where we are going to next, so this is your next, where your eyeball should be, couldn't you just divide every single term by three? Think about it. It's not going to change that, right? And if I divide every single term, once again, I did not touch row one. Leave it alone. Just put it back. 0 divided by 3, 3 divided by 3, oh, look at there, 6 divided by 3, and we're looking good, we got this bottom row. All right, looking good, looking good, looking good. Let me, let me, y'all know how complicated it was for me to move something a minute ago. Let me see if I can do it again. Let's put you over there. You're pointing at the wrong thing, but that's okay. <laughs> you're, just, you're just in my way. All right, so now what I'm looking at is this term. So this is my last step. How do I turn that into a zero? Remember, anytime you want to turn something into a zero, you look at your other row. 
I am not changing this other row. I don't want to change it. I already have it perfect. Don't change that row, okay? But this first row, if I want to turn that into a zero, then I could look at why not take two times row two and add it to row one. Again, where am I coming up? What, what, where, where is she coming up with this? Well, if I take two times one and add it to row one, I think I will get my zero. Let's see. So the very first thing that's going to go right here is going to be two times row two, which is zero, plus that one right there. And you hoped that you didn't change your one, right? Because you wanted that one there. All right, let's go to the next term. I'm going to take two times row two, which is a one, and I'm going to add it to row one, which is a negative two. So that's where I get my zero. Almost done. Got one more step. So I'm going to take two times that two, and I'm going to add it to that one, and I get five. And guess what those answers are? Based on my original problem, that's x1, and that is x2. Now, if you've been playing along with me so nicely all this time, why don't you check it by graphing? Look at, look at what Cindy did. So I put in, as x's and y's, I put in those two equations, and look at there. There is my answer. This is why technology is so nice, because it does allow you to check things very quickly. Have fun with matrices.